Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, we are looking now at the surface area of rectangular prisms. Now, rectangular prisms are the only ones I really want to concentrate on for surface area. You can follow the same ideas for triangular prisms, um, really any hexagonal prisms, anything else, but rectangular prisms are the only ones we're going to do from a practical standpoint. So here we have a rectangular prism and its net. Okay, both of them are labeled. We are still doing area. That hasn't changed. So all of our units are still square units. Okay. This edge is measured as five centimeters because it's a line. But if I measured the entire base right here, five centimeters by three centimeters, it would be 15 square centimeters. It has dimension. It's still only 2D, but I can, I can step on it. I can put my foot on it. So for the purposes of surface area, there are a couple ways you can go. If you look in our textbook, and I encourage you to do so, it suggests taking the long rectangle and finding that portion and then adding on the others if you have a net. To be honest, that's not the way my brain thinks of it. And hand drawing a net can be a little bit of a challenge. So I encourage you to find the surface area of a rectangular prism in a way that makes sense to your brain. This is where you get some freedom. But, but you must represent, if it's a closed box or a closed prism, you must represent all six surfaces and show work with formulas. If it ever says it's an open box, a good example would be a sandbox. Um, anything that doesn't have a lid, then make sure you take off that piece. So I'm going to demonstrate how I would do this, my purposes, um, but I'm encouraging you guys to get a little creative here, still meeting the expectations of showing all your work, using formulas, make your work where someone could follow it, and all six surfaces have to be represented. So in this case, there's your five centimeters. Okay, there's three. And there's your, your four tall. Okay, so if that's three, okay, and you think of it as this is the bottom and everything got pulled away, then you can start to figure out what size your pieces are. You know this one has to be a three and a three and a three, okay? You know this one has to be a five and a five and a five and a five. You know this one also has to be a four, okay? This one also has to be a four and a four the hard thing comes in when that one's a three and that's a three or vice versa. Okay, of the way it folds up. Um, no, I have that correct. And that's where I will be really honest with you. My brain doesn't see it quite the same. So here's what I do. My advice. It's a box, right? It has a top and a bottom, a front and a back, a side and a side. So... If I consider this part, that I'm just gonna kind of shade in right there, okay? And it's matching back. If I consider that to be front and back, I know those rectangles are three by four. Then if I had sides, which I'm going to outline right here. OK, 
okay, sides. And again, the opposite side. And I considered those sides, there's two of them, to be five by four. Well, then that leaves the top and the bottom. Okay, top and bottom. Grabbing a, a color, hold on. Okay, and if I consider the top and the bottom to be down here and up there, then that would be five by three. Okay. And by doing that, it's my hope that you can then break it apart. Area equals base times height. Area equals three times four. Area equals 12 centimeters squared. Do the next one. Area equals base times height. Area equals five times four. Area equals 20 centimeters squared. Area equals base times height. Area equals five times three. Area equals 15 centimeters squared. Well, now we realize we have two of each of these. 12 plus 12 plus 20 plus 20 plus 15 plus 15 equals surface area. 24 plus 40 plus 30 equals surface area. 94 centimeters squared. Now, that's a lot of space taken for one problem. You're not going to get a lot of these problems. These are the kind of things where a teacher will assign three of them, not 13. But notice how the organization, and I didn't do anything crazy, helps you to focus and not remember or not forget pieces. So let's do another example. I'm going to turn over onto my work page. Okay, and if you remember earlier, I said it was my child's birthday as I record these videos. So again, we have the same brownie box. Now, this is a box you could find at any store. And I'm estimating the um, site, the measurements to the nearest inch. Um, but the top is about one inch right there. Okay, the box itself. Okay, it's about eight inches tall. The front of the box, this is a half a sheet of paper. Oh look, it's about five and a half. Okay, and notice I could have measured it with a ruler. So I'm just gonna write right here, brownie box. Nothing fancy. And we're going to do some projects like this with nothing fancy. And I'm going to draw myself a very quick sketch just to write down the measurements. Okay. Remember, we don't judge the drawings. I don't want you to be hard on yourself either. This is literally just to write the information down. So that side was one 
my one and my inch decided to merge. One inch, okay? The height, eight inches, okay? And the width, five and a half inches. And you could write 5.5, decimal or fraction, doesn't matter. But let's look at the box. It has a top, right? So the top and bottom are kind of this shape. And I know it's one by five and a half. And for your awesomeness, I will use decimals, okay? Area equals base times height. Area equals five times one. Area equals five square inches. That's literally just the top and the bottom of the box where they're glued together. Well, now let's look at the sides where they put the nutritional information. Okay. We know that the side looks like this. Okay, it's the side. Again, it's one inch we determined, but we determined it was about eight inches tall. So area equals base times height. Area equals one. I'll make that look like a one instead of an L. One times eight. Area equals eight square inches. So all we have left to do now are the front and back. Just this little rectangle. Well, I know it looks a lot like this. And I know it's five and a half here. And it's eight there. Area equals base times height. Area equals 5.5 times eight. Oh, what? Maybe I can do this in my head. Maybe I can't. No, I can. But I don't want you to do them all in your head. That's where we make silly little mistakes. Even if you can, double check yourself. So if I take 5.5 over here on the side, multiply by eight, that's 40, 44, boom. Area equals 44 square inches. Now that's crazy. This is 44 square inches. This, this little brownie box. But imagine all of it put together. So again, you have a top and a bottom. That means five plus five. You have a side and another side. Eight plus eight. You have a front and a back. Okay, front and back. I didn't label those. It's 44 plus, oops, man, brain and pencil. 44 plus 44. Ten plus sixteen plus eighty eight. Okay. And remember, I told you if you want to use a calculator, that's fine. You shouldn't need one for this. Okay. But if you wanted to, you absolutely could. Twenty six plus eighty eight. Okay. Fourteen. 104 this little brownie box this little thing 104 square inches of cardboard okay now hopefully that helps you can see count on each problem taking about a half a piece of paper
take that space, write it out. It is expected and will be graded. And I can't wait to try some of these with you in class.